there. Howdy. Hello. Is everyone here? Good. Then let's get things rolling. Just a heads up, the content of this character may be rather unsettling for some people. It's pretty graphic, and very much violent. As such, I am going to be taking away the color from certain clips in this video. And yes, I am aware that the blood is made pink in these games, I don't care. There are also going to be some major spoilers for the Danganronpa stories in this video. Overall, viewer discretion is heavily advised. The false headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, and the mascot of Ultimate Despair, Mon... Monokuma. <sighs> Why did you sadistic jerk faces make me play these games? Like, all they did was make me cry. <laughs> I would just start getting really attached to each of the characters, only to watch them die. Like, come on, like, each time I thought I'd learn my lesson. Don't get attached, you're just gonna, you're just gonna get sad again. But no, like, I never did. I never did learn my lesson. The only thing that I kept meeting in these games was despair. For some quick backstory, at the prestigious Hope's Peak Academy, where high schoolers labeled as the ultimate in their fields attend, they're to be molded as the hope and foundation for the world's future, a terrible tragedy occurred. Labeled as the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history, it was all started by one of the Academy's own students, the ultimate fashionista known as Junko Inoshima. Though being a fashionista was not her true talent, what Junko is actually known as is the true, ultimate despair, craving nothing but absolute despair for herself and everyone in the world. But in order to spread such awful despair, she needed a mascot, a face to remind everyone that no matter how much hope you have, once you see it, you know that despair will soon follow. So Junko enlisted the services of a child named Monica Toa, who despite her age, was the chief executive of her family business's robotics branch. Monica designed not only a mascot, but amassed an army of robotic weapons to help continue the work of the tragedy. And this mascot would soon be known to all as the black and white bear of despair, Monokuma. And using Monokuma as a front, Junko would then go on to continue creating despair for everyone throughout the world, making friends kill each other, and causing war just for the sake of doing so. Even after her death, her influence continued to spread far and wide, so far in fact that now the disease of despair has spread into the world of Super Smash Bros., with Monokuma being at its epicenter. So getting right into things, Monokuma would be a fairly light character, He'd have two jumps, and he would be able to wall jump. Despite his appearance, the Monokuma robot is deceptively powerful. There's a reason why the unwilling participants of his killing games can't fight back. He's shown to have many kinds of skills and tools throughout all of the Danganronpa games, and for this moveset, he'll be utilizing nearly all of them. And starting with his jab, he'll actually only have a rapid jab in the form of his Aura Aura Rush attack. An obvious JoJo reference, and one of the many attacks that he used to abuse poor Monomi and Danganronpa 2. Goodbye Despair. It's a quick flurry of punches that ends with an uppercut for the rapid jab finisher. 
His dash attack can have Monokuma curl up and do two quick rolls forwards, turning his whole body into a hitbox and launching foes on contact. The idea for this attack comes from the ball Monokuma units in Ultra Despair Girls, the Danganronpa spin-off episode. His side tilt can be the sadistic EX Corkscrew attack. Another move used on Monami, it's an attack with a bit of windup, but it hits hard and launches foes at low angles. The up tilt can be an innovated two-hit attack that starts with Monokuma punching straight upwards with an enlarging fist, then right after the punch, he extends his claws out to stab them upwards. This is a weird attack, because the punch is what launches foes, whereas the claws only deal flinching damage, albeit the claws still hurt quite a bit. It's made like this to kind of turn the up tilt into a possible trap type of attack. For example, foes could avoid the punch, feeling the hope of safety, only to be met with despair after getting hit by the claws, which actually hurt way more than the punch. For his down tilt, Monokuma takes his little mallet that he uses to press his punishment time button and simply swings it from high to low forwards, hitting the ground. It's a spammable attack that only deals small flinching damage. Now getting into Monokuma's smash attacks, these will be where he introduces you to his children. The Mono Cubs from Danganronpa V3, Killing Harmony. These attacks show Monokuma being fatherly as he plays with his cubs. Starting with his side smash, he takes one of his random cubs and does the apparently pastime of spinning them around hand in hand. He does this as he charges the move, and foes can actually be hurt if they collide with the Mono Cub as they're being spun. Then when the attack is released, Monokuma lets go and watches his cub fly as a projectile, then explodes after a certain distance, though the cub will explode sooner if it hits anything as it flies. The up smash can have Monokuma take another one of his cubs and shows him being fatherly as he does the apparently pastime of tossing your child into the air and watching them explode once they reach the peak of their height. While the height isn't too high, the random cub is still treated as a projectile, and the down smash can this time show Monokuma take two of his cubs at random, and he does the apparently pastime of grabbing them both by the ankles and smashing their faces into the ground from high to low, causing them to explode on impact. What? Your parents ever did that to you? That was always my favorite part! Next for the aerials, his neutral air can be a simple counterclockwise full body somersault. It comes out quick and launches foes on contact. His forward air can be his sadistic EX kick, which is just a simple straight kick forward that slightly angles up. It hits hard, but it does require a bit of precision. This is another attack that Monokuma uses on Monami in Goodbye Despair, but it also looks like he uses it when fighting Sakura Ogami in Trigger Happy Havoc, the first Danganronpa game. The back air can be another move that he uses on Monami, his sadistic EX backhand. This has him turn while swinging his hand horizontally behind himself for a quick and powerful backhanded attack. The up air can have Monokuma do an upward claw swipe forward from low to high, a simple move that's better for hitting foes in front or right above Monokuma. But foes hit by his claws right at the end of the move when his hand is over his head will actually be launched at angles behind Monokuma, and his down air can be another move that he uses on poor Monami, his Pegasus Meteor Fist. This will have Monokuma start with a rapid flurry of punches aimed downwards that deal multi-hitting damage, then the attack ends with one final and mighty punch straight downwards. Getting hit by the sweet spot of that final punch will make do of the namesake and meteor opponent straight down. For Monokuma's grab, he'll be using his favorite chained shackle. The same kind that he used on Leon Kawada, Terra Terra Hanamura, and Kaede Akamatsu when pulling them to their punishments after they were each correctly branded as a blackened. This chain acts as a tether grab. It has long range, can be used in the air as an attack, and it can be used for tether recovery. He'll pummel by licking his foes, just like he does to the cubs when showing them his affection. The forward throw can have Monokuma strike his foe with a fiery fueled chop, knocking them forward. This was one of the attacks that he does to the cubs in Killing Harmony. The back throw can have Monokuma lock his foe in a full Nelson, like he has to do to Hyoko in Goodbye Despair when she tried running away from one of the trials, then follows up with a jumping backwards suplex to smash the foe into the ground and bounce the foe into the air backwards. For the up throw, a random explosion occurs under the foe's feet, as if Monokuma planted a bomb there somehow knowing that he would grab the foe in that very spot ahead of time. This explosion of course sends the foe upwards, and it can hurt other foes who are too close. And the down throw can show Monokuma getting into a cartoony cloud scuffle with the foe, racking up damage and knocking them away afterwards. This was actually the first thing that we see Monokuma do to Monami to attack her, back when she was still Usami. Now then, 
Are you guys all ready to start feeling some true despair? One big thing about Monokuma's personality, or to be more specific, Junko's personality, is that she gets very bored very easily, even to the point that she changes her personality on a whim because she gets bored of it. Junko hates repeating things, hardly ever using the same trick twice. So as such, all four of Monokuma's special attacks will be randomized within the confines of the specials in question. Why randomized? Well, I can't think of anything else that causes more despair in Smash than randomness, am I right? But despite the randomness, each special will still serve their appropriate purposes for the most part. To give an example of what I mean, for Monokuma's neutral special, I'm calling it Despair Projectile. Monokuma's neutral special will always be a projectile attack that shot straight forwards. However, the randomness factor is that it'll always be one of five random projectiles that are shot when it's used all shot from the same arm cannon bazooka that we see him use in Goodbye Despair against Akane. The first of these projectiles are baseballs, which come from Leon Kawada's punishment, the 1000 Blows. Monokuma will shoot three baseballs one at a time in rapid succession by default, flying straight forwards until they disappear at the peak of their distance. But if you continue holding the button down before the move finishes, he can keep firing baseballs over and over and over and will only stop after shooting a thousand or when you let the button go. That probably isn't too wise in most situations though, since the baseballs knock balls into the air and the rate of fire after the first three balls is kinda slow. So it is hard to use this reliably, causing Monokuma to be left vulnerable in most situations. The second random projectile is a missile that flies straight forwards, exploding after reaching its peak range or after colliding with something. However, it explodes into cooking ingredients, and any foe hit by this explosion doesn't take too much damage, but it does cover them in food, making them move a little slower than usual. This missile comes from Teru Teru Hanamura's punishment, Deep Fried Teru Teru. The third projectile is a simple grenade, coming from the Bomber Monokuma units from Ultra Despair Girls. These grenades work very much like snakes. They're affected by gravity, explode only after a certain amount of time, and they can be picked up and used like normal items. The fourth projectile is just random garbage, which was used by the Ball Monokuma units. This is the weakest projectile, but hitting foes with it will inflict them with poison. And the final projectile used by the neutral special will have him shoot a few robotic wasps, the same used on Gunta, Goku, Hara, and Killing Harmony. That punishment in particular really hurt. The same rules apply here as they did to the baseballs, but he can only shoot about 500 wasps before being forced to stop. This one has the fastest rate of fire, however these wasps don't deal any knockback, only damage. But the damage can rock up very quickly if those aren't careful. Overall, the chances on which of these projectiles you get is equal, used to really take your opponent, as well as possibly yourself, off guard. And this does apply to the other three special commands as well, though they'll each only have four random attacks per special, not five like the neutral special. Monokuma's side special will be called Despair Charge. This special will always send Monokuma straight forward, to use as an attack or for horizontal recovery. The first of the charging attacks will have Monokuma race forwards on a motorcycle, the same used during Mondo Awada's punishment, the Cage of Death. To reference the actual cage, the motorcycle will be emitting electricity that deals flinching damage, so foes in the bike's way will generally be dragged along with it. After a certain distance, Monokuma will automatically bail on the bike, letting it keep going until it eventually just explodes, which does deal some damage and knockback to foes within range. Jumping off of the bike will not put Monokuma into freefall, but he won't be able to use side special again until he touches the stage. The second charge attack will have Monokuma ride a small mechanical buffalo forwards a fair distance, referencing Gundam Tanaka's punishment, the Gundam Tanaka Stampede. Which was another one that made me really sad. Any foe in their way will be knocked high into the air, and it deals a hefty amount of damage. He charges a fixed distance before the buffalo just vanishes. The third kind of charge attack will have Monokuma charge forwards with a riot shield, the same kind used by the guard Monokuma unit from Ultra Despair Girls. This is the weakest of the charge attacks, however thanks to the shield, Monokuma will block all attacks that come at him from the front, though he is still vulnerable from behind. And the final charge attack will have Monokuma just rush forwards in a blind fury, referencing the dangerous beast Monokuma units, also from Ultra Despair Girls. This is the deadliest of his random side special attacks, being the fastest and the strongest, even having some pretty high KO potential. 
However, it's not just deadly for the foe. It's deadly for Monokuma too, because if he gets hit during his Berserking Charge, not only will that immediately cancel it, but the recoil deals a lot of damage to Monokuma and also forces him into freefall if he was in the air. It's very risk and reward, but unless your opponent has psychic visions, trying to predict this could lead to them getting a face full of bike, buffalo, or shield instead. Next up for the up special, this will be called Despair Takeoff. As you'd expect, these are all moves that help Monokuma with vertical recovery. The first of these four will reference the very first execution that we've ever seen Monokuma use. Blast Off! This punishment was actually used twice. First on Jin Kiragiri, the former headmaster of Hub's Peak and Kyoko's father. The second time was on Kaito Momota, another one that made me really upset. Though this one for different reasons? <laughs> This will have Monoguma turn himself into a rocket and shoot straight upwards. Anyone in the way of the rocket will of course be knocked out of the way, and as any rocket should, it can gain some great vertical height. However, like the executions that it's based on, after reaching its peak height, the rocket then begins to fall. Going straight down, and assuming there's a stage underneath, it crashes into a glorious explosion, re-revealing Monokuma who flies out of said explosion. He does also take a bit of damage when this happens though. Foes in the rocket's way will of course be knocked out of the way, however if they're hit by the rocket right as it begins to fall, then they will be spiked. The second of the takeoff moves will have Monokuma charge straight up with a jetpack, referencing the destroyer Monokuma units from Ultra Despair Girls. This is your more standard up special. He flies straight up, knocks foes out of his way, and goes into free fall afterwards. The third takeoff special will be what I'm going to call the Mono Wings. This has Monokuma sprout little wings on his back, then fly straight upwards. This is the special with the best recovery, but as a trade-off, it's not an attack. It can deal no damage to foes, it's only for recovery. Monokuma does also have a few frames of invincibility right at the takeoff, making it hard to interrupt. This move references a lot of the wings that we see on Monokuma during Killing Harmony. He uses them when he first appears to the students at the start of the game, and we also see a bunch of collectible Monokumas with wings that can be found throughout the entire game. And the final takeoff move will actually be a tether recovery. He'll use the thorned vine that comes from Kurumi Tojo's punishment, the Strand of Agony. This works like your typical tether up special. He whips it upwards, which can be used to latch onto ledges, and foes hit by the whipping will be launched upwards. But as an added bonus, even after the actual whip happens, foes who touch the thorns of the vines will take some small flinching damage. And now for Monokuma's down special, this set of attacks is going to be called Despair Trap. As the name suggests, this is a trap-based special. Monokuma will lay down one of his famous punishment time buttons, and if any player, including Monokuma, steps on said button, it'll activate one of four random types of traps. You won't know what trap until it's too late, and only one trap can exist per Monokuma at a time. If a new one is placed, then the old one will just disappear. The first of these traps will be the Spears of Gungnir, the execution used on Mukuro Ikusaba, Junko's own sister who was actually in on the plan, hence why she was dressed as Junko, but Mukuro was still taken out nonetheless. Once this trap activates, a bunch of spears will shoot out of the ground and deal massive damage to whoever activated the spears. It only deals damage though, it won't launch players anywhere, though they will be stuck until the spears retract, which does happen near immediately. The second trap will be referencing the punishment of Celestia Ludenberg, the burning of the Versailles Witch. A pillar of fire will shoot straight up and launch any foe straight upwards. This trap is capable of KOing players if their damage percent was high enough, but their damage does need to be pretty high. The third trap will be referencing the punishment called After School Lesson. This is the punishment that can be done to either Makoto or Kyoko depending on your choices, and is ultimately the one that ends Junko's life. Activating this trap will simply have a large crusher appear and smash the player who activated the trap. It deals moderate damage, and it also buries players. And for the final trap, this one can be your run-of-the-mill landmine. It explodes, deals a decent amount of damage, and has probably the best KO potential of the four traps. This mostly comes from how Monokuma likes to blow things up, sometimes even himself. But... With that point brought up, there is actually something to keep in mind when using these specials. Everyone's gonna hate this idea, but... When using any of the specials, there's an extremely low chance that Monokuma's tool will malfunction, causing Monokuma himself to blow up.
And I'm not talking, uh, oh, he just takes some damage. I'm talking, you accidentally just clicked Kamikaze with the hero. The explosion Monokuma deals is very powerful, almost like Hero's Kamikaze, though its range isn't quite as good. And yes, this does actually cost him a stock, but it's not an immediate loss for him. Unlike Hiro, who automatically loses a stock upon using Kamikaze, Monokuma's robot body will just lay there for a couple of seconds until it just falls apart. And that's the moment when he loses his stock, after which a new Monokuma unit is what respawns. This makes it so that, even if by chance Monokuma explodes, foes caught in the blast could still be KO'd first. I don't think that matters to most of you though. You're probably yelling about how much you hate this idea and how bad it is in general. Well, if you think that's bad... There's a chance that attacking Monokuma could also make him explode. Yep. One of the regulations given to the unwilling killing game participants is that they must never attack the Headmaster, aka Monokuma, and doing so will result in immediate execution. Which in this case could lead to him blowing up in your face, just like he almost did to Mondo at the beginning of Trigger Happy Havoc. But just like with the specials though, the chances of this happening are extremely low. But even still, it could happen at any time, and probably at the most inopportune time for everyone including Monokuma. His moveset is designed to radiate despair. He has a lot of attacks that make it hard for opponents to deal with him, and then there's the fact that he could explode on them, probably making opponents not even want to get close. But the opponents aren't the only ones who will feel despair. The same goes for the one who's controlling Monokuma. Not knowing if you'll be given the right attacks to use in certain situations, the thought that you can just randomly lose a stock and be put into a disadvantageous position, not to mention the entire randomness aspect overall, one thing that many Smash players hate in general. But as is the goal of ultimate despair, they must spread true and horrifying despair and anguish to everybody, including themselves. Anyone who wants to control Monokuma to spread despair must first be willing to feel despair themselves. But you might ask, why would anyone willingly want to give themselves despair? Gee, I don't know. Ask Junko. For Monokuma's final smash! I see no other appropriate thing to give him other than his iconic executions. PUNISHMENT TIME! Now you might be asking, which punishment time? He has many, and I referenced most of them within the special attacks. Well, let me just remind you guys that there are occasions when I give characters moves or gimmicks in their movesets that I don't think will actually happen if they were put into Smash, but I build these movesets based on what I personally think is best for the character and what would be most fun. This is one of those occasions. As I said earlier, Junko gets bored very easily and hates it when things repeat. Every single punishment time is unique to the blackened that's being punished, suiting to that person in particular. And with one exception, they're always drastically different. So as such, this is what I think would be the perfect final smash for Monokuma. It'll be a cinematic final smash that can only capture one foe at a time. It starts with Monokuma shooting his chain shackle, and any foe hit by the shackle will be given everything Monokuma's got as they're subjected to their own unique punishment time. You heard me correctly, I think it'd make the most sense if every single character in Smash had their own cinematic punishment time that plays depending on who Monokuma brands as the Blackened. Again, I know this would never actually happen in Smash, making a unique cinematic for every single character just seems insane, whether it's Monokuma or not, but that's just what makes the most sense to me when you look at Monokuma's personality and antics. Just imagine it, Monokuma using obviously dumbed down versions of executions that could reference some of the most iconic ways that we see these characters die in their own games. Bowser being dropped into the lava pit, dropping the moon onto Young Link, recreating Aerith's death onto Cloud, jumping off of Yoshi over a pit, or letting Captain Olimar finish building his rocket only for Monokuma himself to crush it under his feet. 
I could even see these animations all being made in the exact same art style used for punishments in Danganronpa. Some would be hilarious, others would be tear-jerky, but they'd all be despair-inducing for each of our favorite characters in Super Smash Bros. Oh, and of course, I should also mention, despite every single cinematic being different, the result will always be the same. It deals a ton of damage when the cinematic ends, and if the caught foe's damage goes over 100%, it's an automatic KO. For Monokuma's colors, they can all be references to the other various Monokuma units that we see throughout the entire series, with the default being his iconic half-white and half-black design. His first alternate color can change him from half-black to half-pink. This references Monami, the rabbit teacher from Goodbye Despair, as well as Monofunny, Monokuma's only daughter out of the Monocubs. His second color can make him half-red, referencing the forgetful Monocub called Monotaro. Then there's half yellow with stripes, referencing the brainy monocub with the same accent as me, Monosuke, but this could also reference the siren monokuma units from Ultra Despair Girls. Next is a half blue color, referencing the vulgar monocub called Mono Kid. Then there's half green, referencing the final monocub, the robotic looking monodum, though this could also reference Monaku Man, the little cartoon ball monokuma on the side of arcade machines in Ultra Despair Girls. Then there's a near pure white color, which could reference Usami, Monami's original form before Monokuma changed her appearance. It could also reference Shirakuma from Ultra Despair Girls. And the final color can be a near pure black, referencing Shirakuma's other half and the other character with the same accent as me, Kurakuma. For Monokuma's stage intro, he just appears out of nowhere like he does when appearing to the students of the Danganronpa series, accompanied of course with his iconic appearance sound effect. For Taunts, his first could have him roaring and pretending to be intimidating with more taunt-like intentions. His second taunt can actually make him intimidating as he gets angry and swoles up. And his final can have him hopping around in glee while saying his iconic catchphrase, THRILLS, CHILLS, KILLS! And finally, for Monokuma's victory animations, his first can show a bunch of Monokumas all over the place, dancing with glee as they continue to spread despair. His second can just show Monokuma sitting at his chair. His punishment button raises up, and he presses it with his little mallet, after which he sneers and waves goodbye, leaving the camera to suddenly be crushed, leaving the screen in nothing but total darkness. And his final can first show Monokuma very close to the camera, leering into it. That is until he's suddenly pulled away by someone who's carrying him. You soon see that that someone is Junko Inoshima herself, who peers from behind Monokuma giving a very sinister look that would send chills down anyone's spine. And that does it for what if Monokuma was in Smash! I've never played Danganronpa before now, so it was certainly an experience for me. Getting to engage in the story, learning about the characters and their hardships, I really did enjoy what I played. Consider me a new Danganronpa fan, that's for sure. But I still hate every single one of you for making me play them. Anyways, if you enjoyed what you saw and would like to see even more characters be given possible Smash movesets, be sure to subscribe! And if you want to support the show and help me be able to make more content for you guys, you can click the join button either below the video or my main page to become a sponsor for my channel. Doing so will get you access to my private Discord as well as channel emotes. You can guarantee that your name appears in my videos or even get the option of knowing what What If character is coming up next a week in advance. I really appreciate anything that can be contributed. And, of course, if you have a character that you want to see be given a possible Smash moveset, leave a comment down below, or contact me on Twitter at BrawlFan1 on Twitch. I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching!